Okay students, in this step we're going to look at adding sound and particle effects to some of our blueprints uh, or to our general level. So we have here the earlier key and door blueprint we've used a couple of times. If you walk up into it, it tells you to find the key and if you pick up the key it goes ahead and gets rid of it. So we're going to make it a little more dramatic, uh, have a little more feedback. And as much as there's probably better correct sound effects, I'm going to use some of the ones that come with the starter content. So in this instance, I'm going to open my level blueprint, and I'm going to go to my key and door area. And right now, we have it so that uh, when I overlap the trigger volume, if I have the key, it's going to destroy the door. So in here... In this, if it's true, but before the destroy, is where we want to live for all of our sound effects and, and fun. So um, a couple things, because we're going to be destroying this, uh, I'm going to put in here a do once, which is just a nice organizer uh, node that makes sure this it can only go through this gate once. Uh, and this makes sure that we don't trigger it multiple times, have multiple sound effects, whatever. Uh, next, I want to play a sound, so I'm going to type, um, literally, play sound. Now, I'm going to worry about playing sound at location. Um, spawning sound creates the sound in your world, so it remains at a space. Uh, and play sound 2D has no attenuation. Um, it, it is, it's good for UI. It's good for, basically, it's, it, there's no distance involved with it. But I'm... Uh, Actually, I don't want that guy. We want to have uh, play sound at location. Uh, and the sound that I'm going to use here, uh, you can click, and it should show you all the sounds in your um, level. And some of them are just the wave sound, and some of them are cues, which are mixes or potentially like multiple pitches and changes, uh, so it doesn't always sound the same. So here I have explosion one, explosion two, and the explosion cue, which is what I'm going to choose. And I need a location for the sound to be centered on. So I already have our secret door that we're destroying over here. So I can go ahead and get location of this guy. Uh, and just put that as my location for the sound. And I'm also going to spawn emitter at location. Uh, and this is a little bigger. Let me move this guy farther out so we have a bit more room. And uh, much like the sound, I'm going to see all the different emitters that I have here uh, that happens to come with my project at the moment. And I'm going to use the explosion. And it also wants a location, so I'm just going to grab this guy that we've already grabbed the location of and put that in there so it'll put the... Uh, location of my explosion is also there. Uh, I can rotate the emitter if I need to, and also I can scale the emitter, which I suspect we will need to do. And down here we have auto activate turned on so the emitter actually happens. So at this point, I'm going to compile, and we're good. And now, if I pick up the key, we should hear a loud explosion. And that explosion was not quite the size we were looking for, so we would potentially come in here and maybe scale this five times. All right. Um, you can also put some delays in there to uh, feed in different things or to use multiple sounds. Um, if we wanted to have a sound that just happened with ambience in the level, we would literally drag it into the level as an object. You could also... Um, attach sounds to your blueprint or your player, but most of the time it's better to just have it be an existing object. So I'm going to go to my filter tabs here and choose sounds, sound cue, and see what I've got access to. I've got a background, I've got a music. This one is probably ambience of some sort. Uh, let's actually see. I'm going to drag it in this ambient uh, cue. And over on the right side here, I want to look for uh, allow spatialization. Uh, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn that off because I want it to sound the same everywhere in my level. Um, what you could do is set up like a zone 
where as you get closer to a specific machinery, it has a sound, or as you get farther away, or um, a waterfall noise as you get close to a waterfall would have, again, this attenuation zone. But here, if this is just background, I'll have it. Let's play and see what happens. Okay, so I'm getting a bunch of uh, wind noises and birds and stuff, and that's all built into the queue. And if we looked at our waves, I bet we have separate birds and separate uh, wind noises and such. Uh, to me, this volume sounded quite loud, so I'm going to go up to the top and find the basic volume multiplier and drop it to like 0.25 and see if I get a bit of a more manageable background noise. Um, emitters are much the same. You can put particle effects in the level and they just work. Um, but if you want to create a blueprint that turns sound or turns emitters on and off, um, well, let's have a look at how we would do that. I'm going to create, create a new blueprint. I'm just going to make it an actor. I'm going to call this uh, Spark Zone. And for my Spark Zone blueprint, I'm going to add a static mesh. Uh, and and uh, let's make it the platform. Let me get something simple here. Asset platform. And I'm going to add a collision box. That I can have it so that when we walk into it. Ooh. Just the box, please. There we go. And then as components, I'm going to add an audio component. Um, and by default, it's going to choose that one, but I'm going to change it. So here's our audio component of Steam. Uh, I'm going to look and see if I have... Do I have a spark noise? Smoke. I guess I'm going to... Oh, we'll do the Steam noise. Cool. So we have that Steam background noise. And we can also see how far the attenuation... So here is it. In the inner circle, it is as loud as it can be, and then it fades out between to this outer circle, and then outside of this circle, you cannot hear it anymore. Um, and uh, I'm going to look here as I scroll down, and I'm going to turn off auto-activate, because I don't want the sound to happen automatically. And then lastly, I'm going to add a particle system. And I'm going to look here for a template and choose the sparks. So we can see the sparks shooting out here. I'm going to scale it up a little bit so that we can't miss it. It's quite noticeable. It'll just work for our example. And I'm also going to turn off uh, auto activate. Except I, in this trick, it's much easier instead of activating and deactivating. Um, you could just make it visible and not visible. But what is important is sometimes particle effects have a, like a spawn to them. So you notice how as I'm moving it, it's sort of staying within, but then when I release, it starts to fall. So with auto activate off, each time you activate, it starts again. Whereas if I toggle visibility, um, it usually will go visible in its existence. But perhaps I'm wrong on that. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off auto activate. Uh, and in our event graph, what we would do is as I begin overlap, uh, I am going to activate the particle system. And I am also going to uh, activate the steam noise. And to that other end, I could do the same thing and make it a uh, on end overlap. And do the same thing, but uh, deactivate the particle system and deactivate the steam cube. And I could have dragged these down here again, reconnected them, but this is a bit cleaner. Uh, I'm going to compile. 
And now we'll go ahead and close the blueprint. And here it is. I'm gonna just drag it into our zone. We can see here if I hit play, if I walk into the space, I get noise and the effect. And if I walk out, they both turn off. So sound is really important. We tend to uh, sort of leave it for last when we're doing all of our mechanics and everything else, but uh, it is a really important piece for the player, for everything feeling real and believable, and for this audio feedback to the things that you do. So don't leave it for last. Start putting some in, uh, and don't neglect it, because it's, it's an important piece.